Hey Michael with X-Force PC. Somebody pointed out to me the other day that I had not really ever talked about monitors before. So today we're going to take a semi-deep dive into monitors. As you know on this channel I don't ever get super duper technical because I think most of my viewers don't want to know uh, down to the scientific and engineering level. So we're going to keep it sort of high level. Um, so when you're looking at monitors, these are some of the key things that people pay attention to. Refresh rate. That's how fast the monitor redraws the screen every second, and that's measured in hertz. So if this, if this were a monitor and it was running at 60 hertz, that means 60 times per second this monitor is getting redrawn over and over and over and over again. And it's happening so fast, you don't really notice that it's strobing essentially at 60 times per second redrawing the screen. Uh, now some people can see 60 Hertz and tell the difference between that and a higher refresh rate, but most people can't. The, the other thing you look for is uh, pixel response time. So what that means is whenever um, a pixel has to change from one color to another, how quickly can it do that? So just because your screen can redraw, let's say at 100 times per second, if you have slow pixel response time, it's not gonna make any difference. You have to have both for it really to be, to be effective. Now refresh rate, as I mentioned, was, is measured in Hertz, uh, how many times per second the screen gets redrawn. Pixel response time is measured in milliseconds, and the really good gaming monitors are usually around one millisecond. Uh, to five milliseconds, something like that. And that usually you'll see a term called GTG next to that. That's gray to gray, uh, and that's just how they measure it. Um, and we're going to talk about how this relates to X-Plane at, at some point. Viewing angles, that's another thing that's important, and we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit more in depth. But essentially, when you're looking at a monitor, and when you're looking straight on at it, right directly at it, it looks great. But then when you start to move off to one side or you start to get a little lower than the monitor or higher than the monitor, how much does the color shift? And on certain types of monitors, you'll really start to notice the color dimming and so forth when you're looking off to the side. And that can be important if you're, you know, in a, in a simulator and you, you've got you know, a monitor kind of off to the side of you, you know, showing something. So that's viewing angles and uh, has to do with, you know, being off to the side or above or below. Color accuracy is another one. So if you're doing uh, photo editing, it's very important that color accuracy be way up there. If you're gaming, it's not as big of a deal. Um, they talk about the color accuracy in regards to gamut, the, the how wide uh, the color is on a particular monitor, and then there's sRGB and Adobe RGB. Wouldn't get caught up in all that, but just know that color accuracy is something to be considered when looking at a monitor. Form factor, that's pretty obvious, right? 29 inches, 32 inches, 27 inches. Is it super ultra wide, or is it just widescreen, or is it four by three? Uh, and we'll talk about that more later. And lastly, resolution. That's how many pixels are on the screen. And that's generally measured uh, by two numbers. Uh, for instance, on a 1080p display, it's 1920 by 1080. That's 1920 pixels this way by 1080 pixels this way. And one thing that tends to confuse people sometimes is size doesn't matter when it comes to the computer. If you're sending information to a 1080p display, it doesn't matter if it's a 12 inch 1080p display or if it's a 75 inch 1080p display. It's still 1080p. It's still a 1920 by 1080. The computer doesn't care how big of a canvas you put that on. It's just as hard to output it no matter what if the resolution is the same. So don't let that confuse you. Don't, don't think that, well, if I get a, you know, a 60 inch, that's gonna be so much more work on the computer than a 40 inch. Not if the resolution's the same. If the resolution's the same, the work is the same. So stick around and we'll talk about more detail here in just a second. And we're back. So 
we talked about some of these things over here, image quality, pixel response or speed, refresh rate, viewing angles, color or color gamut. And what I've done here is put together a little chart. This is sort of my opinion, but a, only a little bit. I think most people that know about monitors would agree with my assessments here. So there's three panel types. So when you have a monitor, one of the things that the most important thing is the physical panel that they put inside of it. And there's three types. Okay, there's more than three types. There's three common types. There's TN, VA, and IPS. And this stands for Twisted Pneumatic. This stands for Vertical Alignment. And this stands for in-plane switching. And you don't really need to know that, but I told you anyway. So uh, when it comes to image quality, um, that's just when you're looking at a static image on the screen, a picture, a spreadsheet, just how nice does it look? The best looking, nicest looking one is almost always going to be an IPS panel. They have the best color gamut. They have the... Uh, best viewing angles, the best accuracy, and so that's always going to be, in almost every case, an IPS display. TN is going to be obviously the worst. I gave it one star, so these are stars in case you didn't know. And VA is sort of in the middle. Um, it has better image quality than does, uh, than does t TN. And it has not quite as good as IPS, but it does some other things well, as we'll see here in a minute. Pixel speed or pixel response time. You see here the TN is the fastest. So probably a lot of these eSports guys are using TN panels. And in lots of cases, if you went and looked at what they're looking at on their screen, it actually doesn't look that great because they're so concerned with having every millisecond, and we're talking about down to the half millisecond of response time, so they can get that little edge when they're playing Fortnite or whatever, that actually image quality isn't as important to them. And so they'll actually go with something with worse, worse image quality just to get that extra bit of response time. Uh, VA is um, actually the worst when it comes to pixel response time, generally. And then IPS is sort of in the middle, and IPS is getting better and better. This is where all the research is going, is into IPS, uh, in my opinion again. This is where people are really concentrating. So where IPS is weak, you're going to continue to see these things become stronger over time. Refresh rate, you know, that's how fast the screen redraws over and over. Again, TN is the best at that. VA allows for better refresh rate than IPS. So if you're interested in, in high refresh um, and you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of image quality, maybe you go for a VA panel. And then lastly, IPS has the worst up until recently, almost all IPS panels were 60 hertz, but now we're starting to see panels actually that are even 144 hertz, and we'll probably start to see them go even higher. Because as I mentioned, this is where the research is going. So uh, pixel response time has been getting better, refresh rate has been getting better. Viewing angles. IPS wins viewing angles hands down. Um, no comparison. VA is kind of a marrying of the middle uh, of the two. And then TN, if you get off center from a TN panel to the left, to the right, up or down, you're going to see a ton of color shift. But if you're an eSports player and that screen is right in front of you, um, this really doesn't matter all that much. But if you're in a flight simulator and you're moving around in the cockpit and so forth, you might really find viewing angles to be pretty important. Lastly, color, the accuracy of the color, the color gamut. That is by far the best on IPS. It's not very good at all on TN, and VA is sort of a marrying of the middle. So that's the, an overview of the types of panels. Next, we're going to talk about well, a number of different things. We're going to talk about what I recommend for X-Plane, and we're going to talk about different form factors as well. And again, what form factors I recommend for X-Plane. Okay, so let's talk about what I would recommend for X-Plane as far as panel type, and then we'll talk about form factor next. So as far as panel type, um, 
X-Plane is not one of those programs that runs at a really high refresh rate. Think about what refresh rate you typically run X-Plane at. Um, most people run X-Plane in the 30 to 60 frames per second area because they turn the eye candy up to the point where they just can't stand the frame rate anymore. Um, and typically, you know, you're in the 30s. You want, to, you want to see as many buildings as possible, have as much anti-aliasing as possible, and generally most people can stomach between 30 and 60 frames per second. Well, every monitor on the market and every TV on the market is capable of doing 60 hertz or 60 frames per second. So buying a high refresh rate monitor that does 144 hertz or 200 hertz um, isn't really going to get you much when you consider the fact that X-Plane only runs typically on most people's computers at 30 to 60 frames per second. So um, that is why TN is not a good choice. TN is for people that need super fast pixel response time, super high refresh rates. That's your eSports players. Those are the other end of the spectrum. So just forget about TN. VA. VA is a better choice um, if you're on a budget and you need to buy some inexpensive monitors. VA can be uh, a good alternative. It's not the best alternative, but it's better uh, color, better viewing angles, and uh, all that stuff as opposed to TN. So it's a better choice, but the best choice is IPS. Now where IPS falls down a little bit is on refresh rate and pixel response time. But as I mentioned earlier, there's a ton of research going on in IPS panels with regards to getting that last thing, which is pixel response time and refresh rate up. In fact, now you can get, they're expensive, but you can get monitors that are IPS that have fast pixel response time and high refresh. Now, I don't recommend spending that kind of money for X-Plane because as I talked about earlier, X-Plane, most people run it at 30 to 60 frames per second. So generally it's not advisable to spend a ton of money on a high-end gaming monitor. I would definitely look for IPS. I would look for something with a decent pixel response time and, a, and every monitor is gonna do 60 Hertz. If you can get more Hertz than that, fine, but I really wouldn't sweat getting more than 60 Hertz for X-Plane. So IPS is the recommendation. And if you're on a budget, you can always go with VA. Um, the, and, and really, Nobody should consider TN, in my opinion, unless you just need crazy high refresh pixel response time because you're a competitive, fast-paced eSports gamer, and that's really what that's for. Next, we're going to talk about form factor, which can be uh, as important as anything, and we'll talk about resolution as well in more in depth. Okay, now let's talk about resolution. So here I have three resolutions that I'm going to talk about. One is 4K, also known as 2160p. Uh, the reason it's 2160p is there's 2160 lines, 2160 lines here. So the resolution is 3840 by 2160. The second number in that resolution is here. Okay, then we have 2K. This is less common, but it's out there. You don't see it in televisions, but you see it in monitors, 2K, and that's 2560 by 1440 or 1440p. And then lastly, we have 1080p, which is the most common resolution. So that's 1920 by 1080. Okay. Now, what I've got here these are the number of pixels on each of those screens. And I do that by simply multiplying the 3840 by 2160. I get 8.3 million pixels on one 4K display. 3.6 million on a 2K display. And then only 2.1 million on a 1080p display. So lots of times people say, well, you know, well, what kind of performance will I get on a 27-inch monitor? And my question always is, well, what resolution? The size of the monitor doesn't matter. It's the number of pixels you're pushing, okay? So 
That compounds itself if you decide you want to do three. So we've got one screen here. Let's say we want to go to triple screen. We want to do three screens. At 4K, we're using 24.8 million pixels. Look how that compares to a single 1080p. That's 12 times. So if you're using a single 1080p display and you say, you know what, I want to go out and I'm going to buy me three 4K TVs and I'm going to run me some X-Plane. Well, you better have 12 times the horsepower or expect 1 12th the frame rate. I'm not saying you're going to get 1 12th the frame rate, but you have 12 times the number of pixels to deal with. Uh, same thing holds true, you know, when you're running 1440p or 2K, it's 11.1 .1 million. And you can see here, doing three 1080p displays is actually less pixels than one 4K display. So I think this, this matrix is pretty important to help people understand um, the number of pixels you're dealing with. Now, one thing I will mention, it's actually, even though there's more pixels on a single 4K, it's harder work for X-Plane to do three 1080p's. You might say, well, that doesn't make any sense. There's less pixels on three 1080p displays, but X-Plane, there's extra work involved when you involve three screens because each screen is rendered individually. And so the extra work involved, essentially you're rendering three windows of X-Plane. And even though you're, you're doing less pixels while you do it, it's still more work than a single window of uh, 4K at 8 million pixels. It's less work to do that than it is to do that. And that's, again, because of the number of windows. When you open windows in X-Plane, essentially every window you open right now, you lose about a 30 year frame rate. So if you get, let's say you're getting 90 frames per second, you open another window of X-Plane, you just go down to like 60. You open another window of X-Plane, you go down to like 40. And then you open another window and you're down in the 20s. So consider that um, when, you're, when you're considering form factor, which we're going to talk about next, because your form factor might affect um, what type of screen you get, because the less screens you can use, the better frame rate you're going to get. And you'll see that in just a moment. Okay, so one, one form factor to look at is the 49-inch ultra-wide. And I know I'm kind of like hanging into the shot here. But this screen, obviously, is 49 inches wide. And it's amazing. It's great. It's incredible. But there's some caveats with this. I would not recommend this monitor as your only display. You'll notice whenever we use this 49 ultra-wide, it's actually a super ultra-wide, we always have another screen for your instruments. We also do this with our uh, G1000 package. So it's great if you just plan to show scenery on it. Another thing that it does is it's only one window of X-Plane. So you're getting the lateral field of view of two 27-inch monitors curved, I might add, but you're putting it in one window of X-Plane. So you'll get a smaller frame rate hit from a 49 ultra wide than you will running two 27 inch uh, 1080p displays. Because this is exactly the same resolution as two 27 inch 1080p's. It's uh, double 1920, so it's 3840 by 1080. But again, if you were going to use this as your sole monitor, let me go to the view menu here, um, 3D panel. One thing you'll notice is you really can't get a lot of your instrument panel. It gives you a nice wide field of view, but it compresses your vertical view a good bit. So, um, you know, you could always do this, but then you can't see where you're going. So, um, we only use this 49 ultrawide with an auxiliary display running something you know like the g1000 from real sim gear or the uh, air manager program here or maybe you have an ipad with air manager running on it or the g1000 app or whatever but again the 49 ultrawide is a great way to get lateral field of view of two 27 inches 
in one window of x-plane and not take the massive frame rate hit you take uh, by having two windows of x-plane. Okay, so sorry about the less than ideal lighting conditions, but I had to go where a computer was that was set up the, for what I wanted to show you. So this is a single 4K display. So as I mentioned earlier, it's pretty difficult to run three 4K displays, but you could run a single 4K pretty easily on a, a pretty good computer. And so this is a 43 inch, and notice, you know, earlier on that um, 49 ultra wide, um, we really had a difficult time seeing much of our instruments. I can really raise myself up in the seat. Now I'm starting to see, I guess that's the visor, sun visor up there, and I can still see all of the instruments here. So that 49 ultra wide really compresses your lateral field of view, excuse me, your vertical field of view, so you can't see many instruments. And that's why I said earlier, if you go with the 49 ultra, ultra wide, you are going to want something to show your instruments or not be shy about panning up and down because you're going to have to pan up and down to see your instruments. Um, so yeah, that's the downfall of the 49 ultra wide. So just to wrap up some of the combinations you could go with as far as displays, um, you know, we looked at earlier the 49 ultra wide with, uh, this was actually a 22 inch touchscreen down here. Um, so that could be something you could go with and show your instruments down on the bottom screen. The other option is you just have the 49 ultra wide and then you're just going to have a little bit of your instrument panel down there. Now another common scenario is to use three 27 inch monitors and normally you'd arrange these if you were looking top down, you know, you'd arrange them kind of like that. And again, you'd get just a little strip sort of of your instrument panel along the bottom. Now you could, if you're, sorry, I gotta get my eraser. If your um, computer is up to the task, you know, you could add another monitor here and have air manager running on it or some other uh, program showing your instruments or an iPad. And then lastly, we have the, your typical widescreen monitor. That could be a 4K TV, 1080p TV, 1080p monitor, so on and so forth. You'll roughly get about half the screen will be your instrument panel, about half of it will be scenery. So you get a nice wide vertical field of view, but you're limited on your horizontal field of view. Um, sort of have to decide, you know, what, what, you, what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to get, get out of the situation as to which config to go with. And if you look at some of the um, configurations on our website, you'll see videos of me demonstrating a lot of this type of stuff. We sell a number of systems that are set up kind of like this. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Um, it wasn't a super technical deep dive into monitors, and that wasn't the point. The point was to get the information across and, and, um, and the stuff you need to know.